One of the most common questions I get as an HVAC contractor in Sacramento is which AC systems are the best? I see a ton of articles online about this topic. Many that someone who's not even in the HVAC industry wrote. Some compensated blog writer wrote it or gave you a list of top rated systems. Systems that they've never even touched. These bloggers are telling people that nationally recognized economy line systems are better than the systems that are truly going to last you a long time. Short and sweet, three companies have the best reputation over several decades of manufacturing. And in no particular order, they are Train, Carrier, and Linux. Now, when I say Train, I also mean American Standard. And when I say Carrier, I also mean Bryant. Linux is Linux. But American Standard systems are made in the same factories on the same production lines as the train systems are. And Bryant is made in the same factories on the same assembly line as Carrier. The difference? The tag on the side of the unit. American Standard does have a different shell around the sides of the outdoor AC unit, but that's it. And I know this because I've toured the factory where they make them. I've seen the process, and it's very cool. So the same high voltage contactor that's in a carrier is in a Bryant air conditioner. The same inducer motor on a carrier is in a Bryant furnace. But isn't a carrier more expensive than a Bryant? And isn't train more expensive than American Standard? Until now, I noticed that Bryant was a little cheaper, although they were engineered exactly the same. But now in 2021, I see a very marginal difference. It's the same with American Standard and train. Linux systems are priced right along with these systems as well. So if you get different prices from contractors giving you bids, it's because of that contractor's overhead or desired profit margins. It's not because one is more expensive than the other to the contractor. Knowing this, the list really looks like this in no particular order. Train or American Standard, Carrier or Bryant, and Linux. So full transparency here. We sell Train as our premium line and Coleman or Payne as our economy line. But my goal here is to try and stay as neutral as possible here so that you don't feel like I'm trying to sway you one way or the other. You'll hear me talk about some brands being better than others and I mean no offense to anyone or to any manufacturer. But you've got to take this sort of advice from someone who's installed all of them at one point or another and serviced the equipment out in the field. Before I list the rest of the systems, I want to mention air conditioning systems come fully assembled at the factory and are ready to work. However, it takes experienced technicians to modify the unit per the manufacturer's instructions to conform to your specific home's demands. The last steps of installing it in the field and adding whatever additional parts to bring it up to proper building code in your area is up to the contractor you choose. And that's an important point because buying a train, carrier, or Linux includes buying it from a professional, detail-oriented, reliable contractor that you trust and are comfortable with bringing it to life. If someone's going to install it for you, but you can't find them after the install because they sell systems so cheap that they're out of business the following year, or they simply won't pick up the phone, that's not going to help you when you need someone to follow up on your new system. You can buy any system, but if the blower settings, the gas pressures, the static air pressures, the high and low voltage wiring, fuse sizes, a precision refrigerant charge, airflow, water drainage, gas piping, intake air, exhaust system, thermostats, and other safety codes aren't set up correctly, you'll find that your new system is not going to last you nearly as long as it could have been. It can be the difference between your system lasting 10 years or lasting 20 years. All right, let's get back to it. So let's get to some of the middle of the road systems. Other brands in the field would be considered middle of the road type systems. These names and in no particular order are Ream or their sister brand Rude, Amana, Day and Night, Heil, and Bosch. Why are they mid-tier systems? Because as a technician, I seem to repair these systems more than the premium names. The repair parts are available just like the others, and the warranties are just as strong. That's never been a problem for me, but it's a fact that they break down at some of the most inopportune times. So just keep that in mind. 
As far as the lower tier systems go, even more brands perennially end up at the bottom of these lists. And in no particular order, they are Goodman, Daikin, Payne, Coleman, Tempstar, Run True, and York. These have the most challenging time breaking the stigmas that are attached to them. They carry the stigma because they're the brands installed on newly built homes in middle America. See, HVAC contractors are only going to win their bid to get a large job like a new pre-planned community if they have the lowest bid. So they have to use the cheapest equipment that they can get their hands on. And you'll see the most cheapest contractors, home flippers and DIYers buying this equipment and trying to install it themselves. This comes back around to it mattering who installs your equipment and not entirely about what equipment you buy. So aren't there some other brands? Aren't I missing some? If the brand that you were thinking of isn't on this list, it could be that here we're talking about your typical unitary or ducted split systems and package units. Names like Mitsubishi, Fujitsu, Gree, Midia, and others make ductless mini split systems. And we'll talk about those in another discussion. All of the mid-tier and higher tier brands typically have three levels of systems that they offer. An entry level, which is a single stage heating and cooling option, the higher quality two stage options, or the most efficient variable speed options. Let's start with single stage systems. So a single stage system has the simplest form of technology. It's the lowest in price, but the lowest in value. While they are UL listed and safe to put in any home, lower end models have more vulnerabilities than high end equipment. I can't really say whether a train, carrier, or Linux entry level system is better than the other. The technology is the same. Heck, the compressors, which are the heart of the air conditioner, are virtually the same. I can say though that for my home, I would feel a lot better installing one of these three instead of the mid-tier or lower levels. It's not because I'm an elitist or anything. The elite products are the higher end technology variable speed systems. As far as repair and maintenance on single stage systems, almost every part of these single stage systems can be repaired with universal parts, meaning you don't necessarily have to go through the distributor to get the replacement part. Single stage motors, compressors, control boards, pressure switches, and gas valves are everywhere and readily available. Very likely even on your technician's van right now. Two stage systems have better technology. They run more efficiently and control the temperature in your house without fluctuating as much. The main feature of a two stage system is that they all typically run at about 70% capacity in the first stage and 100% capacity in the second stage. These systems will run the majority of the time in first stage, which is where you really start seeing the money savings. Two stage systems are great for two story homes that have two thermostats or zoning. These systems can be set up to run in the first stage when only one floor is calling for air. The second stage will only come on when both zones are calling for air. This is how I have it set up in my house and it works really well. I'll stay with my single stage theme when I say I couldn't pick which one is the best out of the three premium names. Train, Carrier, and Linux are all battle tested and have been for decades in this technology. I tell people when it comes to a salesman saying, oh, but our system's an 18 sear or, you know, but like not a 16 or 17 like this other brand. I tell my customers not to get too caught up in the sear ratings and focus more on the technology. Any two-stage system is going to outperform a single-stage system. The minuscule savings that you're going to receive by going with an 18-seer two-stage over a 17-seer two-stage system is trivial. As far as two-stage systems and the repairs that go with them, two-stage motors and compressors will have to be ordered from the warehouse near your town that distributes your brand of equipment. There aren't a lot of universal parts available for two-stage systems. Now, Capacitors, contactors, and some other parts are universal. But with higher end equipment, you're gonna see that safety components like special pressure switches to protect the furnace or air conditioner from damaging itself. And these parts have to come directly from the factory. So listen, with Train, Carrier, Lennox, and all the way down to Goodman and York, I've never really had a hard time getting these replacement parts. 
At the most, we've had to wait five to 10 business days for the part to come directly from the manufacturer. There are always exceptions to this, but honestly, it would be the same for any brand. Next up are the variable speed systems. Now, when you start dipping into the variable speed systems, the most efficient tier of equipment, you're gonna start seeing some noticeable differences. As a train dealer, it's hard for me to say this, but train have sort of fallen behind Linux on this. Bosch also makes a pretty sweet variable speed system. They even make the first variable speed package unit. Remember how two-stage systems have like a 70% and a 100% capacity? Variable speed systems are the most expensive units with technology that is less bulletproof than two-stage technology. But if you're a techie or you just like the premium life, variable speed stands out because of the comfort levels it can produce. Variable speed systems can adjust their capacity levels from about 25% to 100% in less than 1% intervals at a time. They maintain even lower temperature swings in the house. These systems can keep your home to within a half a degree of the temperature that you want it to be in your house. These are the quietest systems too, because they typically run at a slower speed, they require less energy and create less noise with less vibration. Once again, Linux claims the top spot as the far as the SEER ratings go with a 28 SEER system. All of these variable speed systems have Wi-Fi capabilities, are communicating systems, and ultra quiet. Linux and carrier variable speed systems work with the Amazon Alexa app as well. Train does not have that feature as it only works with the Nexia platform. When it comes time to repair these variable speed systems, only their proprietary parts are gonna work. With such intricate technology comes priciness and the higher learning curve for who can actually make the repairs for you. Train, Linux, Carrier, and other brands with variable speed lines will usually only make these parts available to respected dealers of those brands. The skill it takes to handle inverter type systems is next level. In conclusion, when it comes time to deciding which AC systems are the best, you have three systems that are perennially at the top of the list. Train, Carrier, and Linux. While each of their single stage and two stage systems pretty much have the same capabilities, efficiencies, and lifespans, it's the higher tier variable speed systems where you'll start seeing the differences. Linux has pulled away from the field by offering a 20, 28 SEER variable speed system. When you start looking for a vehicle, you pretty much have a brand name in mind. You might get a higher or lower end model with fewer bells and whistles, but maybe you've always felt comfortable driving a GMC truck over a Toyota truck. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I've seen a ton of articles online about this topic and many of them that someone who isn't even in the HVAC industry wrote. Some paid blogger wrote it. You've got to take it from someone who actually installs the equipment and services them out in the field. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.